Rub up your engines! Okay, it's raining, but it doesn't stop me. Get a little echo off the umbrella. Here we got an Acura. It's draining the battery. If it sits for two or three days, car won't start. Strange thing is, it's been doing this for over a year. Before he met me, he put on this quick disconnect, so if he lets it sit for a while, he just takes the battery terminal off. There's no drain then, but he wants me to figure out why it's draining. Now here's the best way to test it. You get a non-contact meter like this. First thing we do, we turn it on and we put it on two amps. You want it on the low setting. This is a relatively low amp drain. We're gonna go near the terminal. And as we're near the terminal, what we're gonna do is press the zero because these things are so accurate to pick up stuff. You gotta get it in the right area. So we'll put it here, we'll push zero. The reading is now zero. Then we will clamp it around the negative battery cable. As you can see, it covers the whole cable. Now, what are we getting here? We're getting a reading. You can see it's changing. It's going to zero, then it goes up. Now it's staying near zero. So at the moment, this thing doesn't really have much of a drain. A normally accepted drain is 0 0.06 amps. It's staying there now, but I've been checking this for a few hours. You can see it's way too high. It's 0.135 and it should be less than 0.06. And look at it now. Now it's going all over the place. 0.13 and then it's even going up higher. And now it's 0.324 and five minutes later it's almost nothing. 0.01 but you can see sometimes it's 0.2 something. This thing is all over the place. Now it's only high. There it goes again. It goes up again. This Acura has some kind of problem. I'm assuming it's in a computer system where the module's turning itself on. It's turning itself off. It's all over the place. Normally you'll get a drain that stays pretty steady but you can see with this it's way too high and then all of a sudden it's almost at zero. Then it goes 0.24. This thing is electronic gremlins. And when it's got gremlins like this, diagnosing it is going to be an absolute cow. Let's say it was 0.24 and it stayed there. Great. Then you just go to the fuse box and you unplug the fuses one at a time. And when the drain goes down and stays, you know that circuit has a problem. But this stuff keeps coming and going and coming and going. So the first thing I'm going to do is hook up my gigantic computer. So we're hooking up my big computer and we'll see what happens here. Turn right side up. <laughs> Diagnostics. Here we go. And we need Acura. Acura, you think it'd be alphabetical, but no, it's not alphabetical. For some reason, they have Acura after Zuzu. Figure that one out. Taking a little bit of time here. Things aren't as fast and they're older like this. There we go. It's an 07 Acura RDX. We'll go through a full diagnosis of it and we'll do the auto scan first. All systems. Yeah, it's going to take some time. I know that. Here we go. Now it's analyzing it all. Now this is a 13 year old Acura and you can see there's various faults. ABS, body electrical and throttle position, tire pressure monitoring system, the variable valve timing. But we got an electrical short, so let's start by looking at the body electrical. It has five faults. Here we're gonna check the connected control units, see what's happening there. There's nothing that says it's not working. These are not available because the system is on this old car. You can see there's a lot of stuff here, but there is no not ready where there's a problem yet. The fault codes for the body electrical, they're all permanent codes. And they go from abnormal battery voltage, problem in the air mix control circuit door, open in the passenger's air mix control circuit, lost communication between Honda information platform and navigation unit, and lost communication between Honda information platform and hands-free link control module. Now this Honda information platform losing communications. There's a problem either in the wiring of that system or in the computer modules themselves. And that makes total sense because you could see when I had my meter on, it'd show a big drain, then no drain, then a little drain, 
and big drain and really the only thing they can do that are computer systems and as you can see now it's erasing all the codes to the whole computer system then we're going to take it for a spin and away we go we're going to drive it around for about half an hour now so far the vehicle's been running perfectly normally no glitches no hitches it just runs fine so we're going to see what happens as we drive it now we're here we are back in the driveway and let's check the data out during the road test no faults have shown up yet not a single one we'll go to the body electrical that had all those faults see what's happening there check out the control units there see if it's got any weird stuff detected no there's no bad data here there's no bad data there so these are obviously extremely intermittent electrical problems on this vehicle the guy says it's been doing this for over a year now i'm going to go back under the hood and see what kind of drain it's showing so here we go again we turn the meter on low amps set it to zero clamp it on now it's in total normal it's going 0 0.014 0 0.08 as long as it's less than 0 0.06 but even now you see every once in a while it has a spike on it see that 147 was too high now considering that this vehicle has been running this way for over a year perfectly fine but if you let it sit for a few days the battery gets drained i think i'd stick with his solution just have to disconnect here when you're letting it sit for a while you just disconnect the battery just take it off that simple off it goes then just put it back on when you need it again but here i just noticed something this terminal is loose it could be that all this time this stupid terminal wasn't tight enough and then it'll make the car not start when he jump starts it it'll start because you jump started here it could be that simple this one's tight always make sure this is tight this one isn't it's wiggling perhaps this one is just as dumb as get this nice and tight now it's not moving at all now that i've done that it's got those micro readings up oh, there it goes it's still every once in a while there it goes 1.3 it's still got some kind of funky spike that's draining it a little bit too much now it's better than it was but still every once in a while you'll see it's going over 0.6 you could see every once in a while it was going 0.24 and it's got to be less than 0 0.06 four times more but it's going up it's going down from the readings that i got on the computer with the star data i'm assuming it is a computer module and from the data that i read it showed that there was problem in the body electric now he's taking to the honda deal and he said they can't find anything wrong with it well I doubt that they went as far as I did driving around a long time and analyzing all that data like I did because it did show that there were data anomalies but once I raced them after half an hour they didn't come back now if the guy wants to drive it around for a couple of weeks and bring it back I can hook the machine up and see if those codes are still there if they do come back then I know there's definitely some kind of problem in a computer module system but since it runs so good and all you got to do is unscrew that terminal and take it off if it's sitting for a few days I stay with the cheap fix myself because who knows it runs fine otherwise for over a year it might go years and years more and have any problems other than it will drain a battery if it sits for a few days and here's some bonus questions and answers. Ted's on fire 16 says, got an 05 Jeep Wrangler, four liter straight six. It's shifting weird. Now it's stuck in second gear and has all kinds of trouble codes. Am I gonna need a new transmission? Well, you may need a new transmission. Realize if you got a whole bunch of codes, more often I know, either the wiring or the main computer goes bad and does exactly that. I had a guy with the same exact vehicle. Did the same thing was shifting weird and then it was stuck in second gear and i went through it and i mean i had to spend a lot of time because you don't want to just guess with the main computer so i checked all the wiring unplugged them from the computer tested them all to see if any of them had shorts none of them did and then i just came to the conclusion that the main computer the pcm was bad so i put one in programmed it and then actually went back to shifting perfectly fine so do find a guy like me a good mechanic who knows what they're doing have them check the pcm first so when you get a whole bunch of codes on that and it's stuck in second gear it's often a bad pcm it's a pattern failure since i've seen that a few times that's the first thing i would check if i were you freddy's a faker says 
2010 Chevy Cobalt. It has an intermittent high idle. Goes up, goes down, but not all the time. It's 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 inconsistent. I check for vacuum leaks around. I don't hear anything. I don't see anything. Help. A lot of times, what happens to those? They get a vacuum leak, but you can't see it because it's an internal vacuum leak. And that's the PCV valve on that stupid design. The valve is integral to the whole valve cover assembly. You got to buy the whole stinking valve cover with the PCV valve in it. You can test it. You can have a vacuum applied to it and it should hold. If it doesn't hold, they've got a rubber diaphragm inside them and they often rip and they do exactly that. Now, for the life of me, I don't know why GM did that. They made the PCV valve part of the entire valve cover and you got to buy the whole assembly. So you can thank GM for another brilliant design that you got to spend a whole bunch of money for something that they should have made as a separate piece. But check that first because I've seen that happen all the time in those cobalts. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.